Hey friends, welcome back. It is Monday, it is the beginning of a new week and I'm happy that you're here with me for um, this video. I'm taking you again on a day in the life of a wedding planner. So if you guys are new to my channel, I am both a wedding plan, pa blah, blah, blah. I am both a wedding planner and a Pinterest marketing strategist for wedding pros. So it kind of was a natural transition transition that I got into Pinterest. Um, I was doing it for my own business. So on this channel, you'll see content from both the wedding planning side of my life and the Pinterest side of my life. But if you're a wedding pro, this will help you no matter what, because I give tips and tricks for Pinterest strategy, as well as just kind of like wedding planning stuff that I feel I loved watching other people's videos about being a wedding planner or a wedding vendor um, and learning from them because I think we all do things differently and there's no, you know, right way to do anything. Oh, hi, Pearl. Um, so I wanted to kind of take you behind the scenes of what it is to be a day in the life of a wedding planner today. And listen, it's not always exciting. And this will be actually uh, uh, more than one day. This is not actually a full day. This was done over the course of a couple days because um, I'm going to be showing you a venue tour of the St. L in downtown Nashville, uh, going to Hobby Lobby and doing uh, a little tablescape. And I'm showing you how to make your own DIY napkin rings. And and if you didn't check out my last video, I'll link it here. It is from my Easter tablescape. And in that video, I actually show you my tablescape, but I don't show you how to make your own napkin rings. So this video, I'm showing you how to make your own DIY napkin rings. It was so easy. Um, I made it up. Who knows? Maybe it was an actual tutorial somewhere, but I just thought of it in my brain and I was like, these are the supplies I think I need for this. And I just made my own. So, and that's it. So we're going to uh, have fun together and stay tuned. And I hope you learned something new today. Listen, I don't know about you, but I cannot do anything until the bed is made. It feels so good to just have a clean room. And listen, we have stuff laying around. We have three dogs, so it's not always picture perfect in this room, but it feels good to at least have the bed made before we start the day. All right, the first stop on our day today is a tour of the St. L in downtown Nashville. So they opened last year and you can imagine in 2020, they did not get a ton happening in their beautiful space. And I actually really love this space because it reminds me of some places back in Los Angeles and Nashville was really in need of a cool modern space. So you can see here, this is their main room. It is huge, but it has a really awesome built-in bar that's going to be right here on the left. And you can use those drapes to close off the space and make it seem just a little more intimate if you need to. But overall, I mean, it is such a rad space. So this room over here is typically where they host ceremonies. Um, they said that they've had ceremonies both here in front of the windows or on this wall on the right here, um, depending on how many guests you have. I mean, again, the space has uh, all real plants except for those, that ivy that's along the window line because it's just too hard to water from there. They have those dimmable bistro lights that you can see on the ceiling. And overall, I mean, the natural light in here is incredible. And don't worry, I asked about parking because coming from LA, parking was always such a big deal for us. But yes, there's a ton of parking spaces right around the building. And I mean, you guys, both for corporate events and for weddings, I think this is such a great space.
So right down the hall, there's the bridal suite. And don't worry, we'll get to the groom's room next. But they have their own personal bathroom. It's so well decorated in here. I'm really obsessed with the style. Both a little bit of boho, modern, industrial. And there is a little bar area. Now know that you cannot bring your own alcohol in, but they do offer packages um, where you can pre-purchase cocktails and champagne and stuff while you're getting ready. So I would really take advantage of that. That's just such a really great space that you can spend the day in. Boys, don't worry, you have your own space as well. Definitely a little more masculine looking, super cool space again. And uh, it is just downstairs, so don't worry, you won't see each other before the wedding if you don't want to. So if you're curious about the St. Dell and you want more information about their pricing and packages, um, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to connect you with the venue manager over there, but as well, I'll leave their contact uh, information in the description so you guys can take a look. Next up, let's head to Hobby Lobby to grab some items for our tablescape. So as a reminder, this was actually my Easter tablescape. So you'll see a lot of their Easter stuff. And honestly, this I know you might not believe me, but this was my very, very first time at a Hobby Lobby. I typically go to Home Goods, um, even Kirkland's, but I was impressed. I mean, I, there are some stuff that is definitely not my style, but there was some uh, stuff even just here in the Easter section that I thought was really adorable. And to be honest, I took some notes of things that I could make on my own too. And I will say their selection of faux and silk flowers is really good. I was able to find everything I needed for my tablescape. It was really decently priced and I got stuff for around the house as well. And these are cool because you can repurpose them. So really like that part of it. All right, gang, let's learn how to make our own DIY napkin rings. Um, they're super easy. They can be whatever color or pattern you want. So let me show you how I did it. I want to start by apologizing that all of these videos are verticals from my phone. I don't know what happened, but the ones that I took on my camera, I cannot find anywhere on my SD card. So forgive me. I hope you can see clearly on um, these vertical videos. But anyway, the first thing I did is actually at Hobby Lobby, I went into their like uh, material department. I don't know if that's the fabric department. And I found this on sale. I went in the sale rack because I really needed just a little bit, but it was a minimum of one yard that you could purchase. So I found this like cool, funky, um, like, pink shimmery fabric that I really liked and I grabbed that. Now what I really wanted more than the fabric was the tube. So the tube of the fabric is what I'm going to use for my napkin ring and is literally the perfect um, size for napkin rings. So all I did is I grabbed the end, I guesstimated, I would say about an inch um, width if that's um, you know, go guesstimate with that. And then I start using a pocket knife and I just slice through it. And it's not perfect by any means, but I don't really think it has to be because the napkin's gonna go in it and you're really not gonna see the edges. Next, I'm just gonna take that first napkin ring and measure it out uh, on my fabric. Now, my first ring, I made a mistake here where I should have left a little bit extra on the edges in order to tuck the fabric under, like inside the napkin ring itself. So I get better as I go on. And honestly, we have so much fabric to play with that don't be afraid if you need to start over, it's not a big deal.
I'm just gonna roll my strips all the way around. Now, if you have extra fabric at the end there, you can totally cut it off or you can glue it down. It's completely up to you. Here, I'm just gonna glue it down, um, make it overlap so it kinda has a little bit more of a smoother space. So be careful, the hot glue is really hot. I got it all over my fingers. There's no easy way to do that. Um, and then the idea here is you wanna tuck the rest of the fabric um, with underneath the tube, right? So this is where I wish my piece of fabric was a little bit wider so that I can go under and tuck it in. I think I tried to cut it and then I realized, no, that's not going to look good. So I'm just going to go and hot glue it underneath. Ta-da! So there you go. Super easy DIY napkin rings. Now, what's cool about this is you can make as many as you want with that tube. I mean, I made six and I still have so much left with that tube and so much fabric left. But you can choose any color you want. This could be a wedding project for you or just for your next dinner party. Gang, thanks so much for watching another video. This was a day in the life of a wedding planner. I hope you enjoyed. And as always, if you have any requests or things that you'd like to see, whether it be on the wedding planning side of things or the Pinterest side of things, please comment below and let me know what that is. I'm always happy to customize my channel to whoever is watching, obviously. And sometimes I don't think of the things that you might wanna see. So let me know, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed, and I hope to see you next week. Bye.